Gee, all this snow and ice is making my exposure difficult to figure out. I've got the histogram, but I just wish there was a better tool available for my photography. Are you having any trouble exposing over there on your video, Jordan? No, man, I'm having no problem at all. What, who are you thumbs upping and who are you talking to? Welcome back Deep Review TV viewers, Chris Nichols here for Deep Review TV and today we're talking about exposure and we're talking about the histogram and why, well it's just not good enough. Now I'm assuming that you guys know what histograms are. If you don't, do some research then come back to our video so I can tell you why you don't want to use them anymore. And let's talk about waveforms. When we get into raw photography, what we're trying to do as photographers is maximize our dynamic range. And what we've learned is of course you can't go with blown highlights. If you go too bright, that detail's gone. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, histograms are a fairly advanced tool. It took me a while to learn them. I get them now. Why can't I use those as an accurate way to find out if my highlights are blown? And first off, I do want to say that histograms are a fantastic tool. It's just that there are better tools out there and we could really benefit from using them. If you take a look at this example here, we can see, yes, okay, we've, we're losing detail on the highlights. We can see that on the histogram, but where in the scene? I have to now look around and evaluate what's actually blown out, what's still okay, and where in the frame is it blown out. Blinkies give us some assistance, but they're just going to show us details that are completely shot. They're not going to tell us if we're close or not. There are better tools out there. That's why we've made this video for you today. All right, so the first thing we need to learn is how to just read a waveform, and it's very visual. It's actually quite easy. So the first thing I want you to look at, right up here at the top left, that is the waveform for this particular video clip. Now, when we're reading a histogram, the far left of that graph is absolute black, the far right of that is absolute white, and then right in the middle is our middle gray. And that does work to show you where your shadows transition to your highlights. But waveforms go from bottom to top. So at 0% at the bottom, that's your absolute black shadows and 100% at the very top that's your absolute white highlights but you get percentage lines if you look at the waveform you can see those percentage lines and that's a great way to know exactly how close you are to blowing out and how bright things are relative speaking to other things in the frame now the other amazing thing about waveforms that you may have noticed as I move my hands any movement on the waveform translates exactly between the position on the frame and the position on the waveform so if I hold up my hand here you you can see it's on the waveform in the exact same position. If I hold up this hand, there it is there, same position, okay? And that's really nice because it gives you a visual reference of where the highlights and shadows are falling in the actual frame. Now, just like a histogram, if things get brighter, they approach closer to that maximum white. Take my hand for example, right here it's in the light, you can see how it's exposing right now. As I push it closer to the light and it gets brighter, you can see how it actually peaks off the top of the waveform. And as I bring it back, how it goes back to a more manageable exposure position. So your exposure is shown across the whole frame. Another example you want to look at is the wall behind me. It's giving this sort of curved tapered line, this white line going across the waveform and notice how it drops from the brighter area over here down to the darker area over here. You actually see that translate on the waveform. All right, so now let's look a little bit more about how histograms vary from waveforms. Let's go back to our original example that we looked at before. Now, here in this shot, you can see the histogram is telling us that we're losing detail. You can see that mountain going right off the right side of the frame. That's a warning to a photographer that we have blown out highlights. Now, if we look at it, we can see, yeah, the background's really bright, but so is my face. And really, we don't care if the background's blown out, but it's my face. Hopefully, you guys care more about that, and we want to have that exposure within the range of the camera, but the histogram doesn't differentiate between the two other than to show their relative brightness in relation to each other. But look at the waveform. So we look at it here, we can see that the window is clipped, but it shows that right in the exact position of frame where the window is. We can also then see that my face is also clipped, but we see that specifically in the position of the frame where my face is. This is the real key. Now check this out. We're going to drop the light down lower in exposure that's hitting my face. And what you can see is on the waveform, the position where my face is starts to lower and go within range of what the camera can handle. But notice that over on the window, that area is still totally clipped and blown out. I can see, relatively speaking, where subjects are in my frame, what's blown out and what's not. Now this is a great aid for a videographer where it's assumed that they're going to have to work on the fly, adjusting things quickly as they see lighting change. But 
As photographers, we deal with a lot of fast shooting action as well. This would be really useful. Why shouldn't we have this too? Okay, so learning waveforms is the first part of the equation, but now let's talk about the second part, and that is the cameras that incorporate these things. This is where we run into a problem because the fact is there's no photo-based cameras that incorporate waveforms. You really have to go to high-end video cameras to get the waveform feature. Even mirrorless cameras like the GH5 and GH5S, which are excellent hybrids that incorporate waveforms, strangely don't let you use waveforms in the photo mode. It seems strange and something that should be easy to fix. I want to show you an example here on the Panasonic GH5 because one issue that we do have with waveforms, they can take up a lot of real estate. And if you look at the LCD screen here, it takes up a lot of space on the screen because of its relatively low resolution. But when you go to a higher res screen like the EVF of the GH5, here you can see it takes up much less space. We get a much less cluttered view. However, I feel like in today's industry, we're getting into cameras that have better EVFs, better magnification. I think we can make that work. Why am I even talking about this now then if we don't have access to it? Well, the fact is we've got really exciting hybrid cameras on the market now. The Nikon Z cameras, a lot of the Sony cameras, the Fuji X-T3, X-T30, and of course a lot of the Panasonic mirrorless as well. All these cameras are improving their video capabilities and I want to see waveforms come onto those cameras for the video formats. But then why not also let us use those in the photo formats? Now the third and final part of this equation is that we just have to incorporate waveforms into our post-process workflow. And of course if you look at video software like Apple Final Cut or Adobe Premiere, they incorporate waveforms. In fact, we do often bring images into our video timelines and edit them using waveforms and it's beautiful, it works great. It's a fantastic way to edit them. And then of course we're importing those into a video timeline. What we really need to do is get those tools that we have in the video software and move them into the photo side of things. The technology is there. It's very easy to do. There's no challenges other than getting over the mindset of trying to keep video and photo tools separate for some crazy reason. The only other thing you have to do is learn how to use waveforms and hopefully this video has helped you do that. Let's get some discussion going and see what you think about this. As usual, leave us comments below, subscribe, check out Instagram and Twitter. Let us know what you think. Until next time, Hope you enjoyed this educational video. We'll see you very soon.